Hello everyone. My name is David Escarapur, also called Dave Mate, from Circle of Drink, which is an international yerba mate community, as well as a provider of organic yerba mate and yerba mate products. The reason why I created this research video was because I started to receive several emails from people asking about the supposed connection between yerba mate consumption and cancer. Now, I tried to remain as impartial as possible and presented the various information from research journals and various doctors and various scientists who've looked into this matter. So I'll let you draw your own conclusions throughout the duration of this presentation. Personally, I do drink at least one liter to two liters of yerba mate a day for about five years now, and I personally feel that it's safe to consume. Uh, that's my personal, personal experience with mate, but my idea here is to present enough information where you can make the best judgment for yourself. Now, this information presented has not been approved by the FDA, so it's up to you to do your own due diligence, your own research, and if needed, discuss these matters with your own medical care practitioner. All right, with that said, let's get into it. Yerba mate, pronounced yerba mate, or sometimes sherba mate, is a shrub native to Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, and Uruguay, scientifically named Ilex paraguayensis. It's of the Aquafoliaceae family, a holly plant. Traditionally, the herb is consumed from a small vessel, also called a mate or a gourd. A metal straw with a filter, a bombisha or a bombilla, is used to draw up the infused mate after warm or cold water has been added. Drunk for thousands of years by the indigenous peoples of South America, the Guarani, mate has been a staple drink of the continent for untold times. It's now acclaimed as a national drink of several South American countries, which include Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, and for all intents and purposes, southern Brazil. Yerba mate in the United States. Over the past decade, there has been an increasing interest in yerba mate, particularly in the associated health benefits of this herb. There has been a great deal of association of yerba mate with weight loss, which has been scientifically proven to increase metabolism and have anti-obesity effects. However, mate's ability to increase well-being, concentration, provide natural energy, as well as safely increase productivity without the negative side effects of coffee, has become a new focal point of mate in the West. The term mateology, coined from the first North American book published on mate, is associated with an erupting philosophy, a way of life, of mate drinkers, also known as materos, who have a deep-rooted relationship with the herb. It's more than a drink for them, but a way of life. Mate has become a tool of communication and a natural device of sharing and bonding. Never before in Western history have we seen an herb unite North Americans such as mate is beginning to do, especially in the last three years, from 2010 to 2013. Pharmacology of Yerba Mate Though Yerba Mate has been scientifically studied for over 100 years, it has only been in the last 10 to 20 years that a renewed and relatively vigorous interest into the pharmacology of the herb has begun. With the work of Elvira de Mejia, Department of Food Science and Human Nutrition, University of Illinois, Abrana, and other notable scientists, we now have a better insight into the chemical makeup of this ancient herb. We know that mate has a unique array of minerals, antioxidants, vitamins, polyphenols, flavonoids, and acids. It's becoming generally accepted through empirical and anecdotal evidence that mate is significantly more effective than green tea due to its high concentration of chlorogenic acid, caffeine derivatives, and saponins, which have anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, lipid lowering, which decreases cholesterol, and anti-diabetic properties which regulate glucose levels. The beginnings of yerba mate and cancer discussion. As Americans, we love our Google. So naturally the term yerba mate has over 3 million global monthly searches and the term yerba mate safety has just over 250,000. We're curious about what we put in our bodies and rightly so. On the first page of the search results, we find several articles which implicate yerba mate in causing cancer of the esophagus or other parts of the upper aerodigestive tract, which include the mouth, oral cavities, throat, etc. 
The primary article in Los Angeles Times is Yerba Mate Tea, Drink in Moderation, by Elena Canis. It states, Scientists disagree about the bottom line on Yerba Mate, says K. Simon Young, clinical coordinator and research pharmacist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. The tea does contain a long list of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, including B vitamins and vitamin C, manganese, potassium, and zinc, and the beneficial plant compounds quercetin, theobromine, and theophylline. One study of roughly 1,000 adults in Uruguay, published in the journal Cancer Epidemiology Biomarkers and Prevention in 1996, found the risk of lung cancer to be 60% higher among mate drinkers. Another Uruguayan study, published in the same journal in 2003, found that in a group of about 800 adults, mate drinking tripled the risk of esophageal cancer. Though Conis did not explicitly state the researchers involved in the studies, her references stem from the work of Eduardo de Stefani. Conis was referring to his 1996 publication, Mate Drinking and Risk of Lung Cancer in Males, a case control study from Uruguay. That study, as well as several subsequent studies by De Stefani and his team, encompassed nearly 15 years from 1990 to 2004 of case study investigations looking into the connection between mate and cancer. I will be referring to the cumulative body of De Stefani's work moving forward, in particular with his recent publication, Mate Consumption and Risk of Cancer, a multi-site case control study in Uruguay, where he incorporates previous studies. Between the years 1990 to 2004, De Stefani and his team of social workers in Montevideo, Uruguay, studied 13,201 participants from four major public hospitals. De Stefani used a statistical measurement called an OR, odds ratio, to evaluate the odds of someone getting cancer as a result of drinking mate, compared with others who did not consume mate or had consumed it in a particular way. Using interviews from questionnaires, Patients were asked about their age, sex, education, income, weight, height, history with alcohol, cigarettes, yerba mate consumption, the amount they consumed, whether it was hot or cold, etc. From this retrospectively gathered information, De Stefani suggested that due to chemicals known as PAHs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, yerba mate may be responsible for an increase in certain cancers. We'll discuss more about PAHs in more detail later. Now, let's discuss some of the flaws, biases, and adjustments of De Stefani's cancer research. However, what Atlanta Conis irresponsibly and carelessly omitted from her article in the Los Angeles Times, Yerba Mate Tea, Drink in Moderation, were the limitations of De Stefani's research, which we'll discuss in four principal segments, socioeconomic status, diet, currently sick patients, and subjective responses to questions. Now, with any given epidemiological and scientific study, there are limitations which invariably confound or confuse the results of the experiments. Scientists use the term adjusting in an attempt to compensate for these inherent biases and limitations, but there is only so much adjusting that could be done. From the start, it should be stated that there has never been a population-based or any scientific study that has conclusively proven yerba mate to cause cancer. Such a basis is critical to begin the dissection of De Stefani's work. Currently sick patients. It is important to understand that all the participants in these studies were already sick with a slew of diseases such as skin disease, blood disorders, eye disorders, disease of the nose, goiter, disease of the mouth, and various cancers of the mouth, colon, esophagus, prostate, bladder, kidney, etc. Many of these patients consumed alcohol and smoked black tobacco as well, which may have been the primary contributors in the aforementioned diseases. David Goldenberg, MD, states in his paper, The Beverage Mate, a Risk Factor for Cancer of the Head and Neck. The main problem in evaluating the effect of mate consumption as a carcinogenic agent is the difficulty in obtaining the appropriate control of confounding risk factors such as alcohol and tobacco use. Dora Loria, in the paper Cancer and Yerba Mate Consumption, a Review of Possible Associations, adds to the discussion. Choosing to use hospitalized controls could be a cause of confounding in the results. 
From a methodological point of view, it would have been more appropriate to use subjects from the general population in the control groups. Socioeconomic status. De Stefani admits that perhaps selection bias and recall bias are the major limitations, since both groups were drawn from low socioeconomic strata. Now, to speak bluntly, the participants in the study were poor. With abject poverty comes poor diet and nutrition, as well as poor education and lack of full comprehension of the questions being asked. There are literally incalculable and immeasurable variables that participate in acquiring a disease, not to mention the genetic predispositions that cannot be well quantified nor comprehensively controlled in the studies. Such information is out of the scope of the researchers' parameters. Participants were asked if they drank mate warm or hot. The hypothesis of hot mate being the culprit of cancer through thermal carcinogenesis has been widely accepted within the community of researchers involved in the matter. The fact is that most of the participants could not truly gauge what warm or hot was, since these terms are relative to the drinker, thus resulting in highly subjective responses. One man's warm may be another woman's hot. I know from three years of personal experience living in Argentina and Uruguay that many mate drinkers consume it with scalding hot temperatures exceeding 190 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very normal to many drinkers of the southern cone. Loria in 2009, referring to a Brazilian study, stated that the temperature of the beverage was, in general, self-evaluated, defined subjectively as warm, hot, and very hot, and these categories presented only limited correlation with thermometer readings. From various studies of the dangers of drinking any hot beverages, well documented in Japan, China, and Iran, we know that the substance alone isn't to blame but the procedure of how it's prepared with very hot temperatures. This inflammation of the throat lining causes esophagitis, a precursor to esophageal cancer. In a similar case study conducted in Brazil, researchers admitted that the evaluation of the role of temperature may have been biased because of the unclear classification of beverage temperature. Let's discuss the poor diet now. A consequence of poverty is poor diet. It is firmly established that the high intake of fresh fruits and vegetables are responsible for attenuating the chances of developing cancers or any disease of the body. It is highly likely that the lack of vegetables, coupled with the high intake of charred meats, prepared in the traditional barbecue or asado methods of South America, play critical roles in the development of the already diseased patients in the study. 15 polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, Known carcinogens have been identified in 11 brands of mate. However, these chemicals are found in all roasted barbecue foods, green tea, tobacco smoke, and common soap products. Some researchers believe that the high intake of meat from the participants played a role in the disease. Referring to a Brazilian study, Loria in 2009 discussed that PAHs in association with barbecue meats. Concentrations of PAHs varied according to cigarette and mate consumption with the exposure to asados or open fire used for barbecuing meat. This observation led the authors to conclude that the population could be exposed to a certain level of PAHs through tobacco smoke as well as mate drinking and inhaling asado smoke. Now let's discuss the subjective responses to the questions asked. Participants were asked to recall past actions which were used as data points to draw conclusions by De Stefani and his team. The problem with this is multifaceted. As previously mentioned, as per the temperature of the mate drunk, the room for error is incredible. Moreover, as of yet, there remains no standard method to properly gauge the exact amount of mate consumed by each participant. As each drinker consumes mate in various sized gourds, cups, tea bags, etc. And to expect these already very sick participants to recall the exact amount of mate consumed over any duration of time, in this case, years, is unrealistic. Further standardization of measurements and temperatures need to be undertaken for such epidemiological studies to carry more validity. Now, let us discuss the validity of cancer and mate possible association. Hot mate with tobacco and alcohol usage. Notwithstanding the obvious flaws and limitations of De Stefani's research, which from all subsequent studies linking mate to esophageal cancer stem, a connection between the consumption of yerba mate coupled with smoking alcohol cannot be ignored. 
De Stefani, as well as other isolated case studies in South America, have consistently linked higher incidences of cancer with smokers and drinkers who also drank hot mate. Most studies in humans strongly suggested that mate acts as a carcinogen due to the high temperature of the ingested liquid. Cancers were strongly positively associated with hot mate drinking. The synergistic action between mate and alcohol and tobacco was a clear result in several studies. Referring to a Brazilian study, the authors postulated that the presence of these mutational differences could be explained, at least partially, by the presence of chronic inflammatory process due to mucosal irritation caused by very hot mate commonly drunk in this area. Rowland, in 1995, stated, Those who drunk mate cold did not have an increased risk of esophageal cancer, whereas drinkers with very hot mate did have an increased risk of esophageal cancer, even after adjustment for the effects of alcohol and tobacco. It has been proposed that mate may act as a solvent for the chemical carcinogens found in tobacco, or the phenolic compounds contained in mate may act as cancer promoters. It is clear that more research needs to be done in this area, but there does seem to be a connection between mate, which is mostly drunk very hot in South America, and the usage of tobacco and alcohol, combined with the high intake of charred meat and barbecue smoke, which we know contains PAHs. I hypothesize that the powerful antioxidant compounds found in mate act to increase the solubility of already present carcinogens found in the body from alcohol and tobacco, as mate does in like manner with increasing the solubility of health-promoting nutrients and vitamins, with the powerful aid of saponins and chlorogenic acid. Perhaps the mate is attempting to rid the body of these toxins, and as the drinker continues to consume alcohol and smoke in excess, the mate never fully gets a chance to do its job. I speculate this may have something to do with mate being used as a temperance drink at the turn of the 20th century. Even today, we are able to find anecdotal evidence of mate's ability to curb the desire of alcohol consumption and replace tobacco. The body is attempting to alkalize and return to homeostasis. But with the abundance of toxins bombarding the system, subsequently building up due to the increased solubility factors of the mate, they have no effective way to leave the body. This may result in oxidative stress, which in turn may be responsible for these correlations found with mate and alcohol and tobacco consumers. And the fact that most of this mate is being consumed hot, leading to the inflammation of the mucosa lining of the throat and lungs, the factors continue to compound in favor of cancer initiation. The PAHs identified in mate perhaps now become more of a threat in such a toxic and susceptible environment. Though, it has been widely hypothesized that the PAHs in mate result from improper drying methods and storing, as well as the leaves being smoked or burned over direct flames. Based upon these studies, it is suggested to consume mate below 180 degrees Fahrenheit, preferably closer to the 155 to 175 degree Fahrenheit range as well as limiting tobacco and alcohol consumption, effectively assuaging potential associated risks. Discussion and Conclusion Is yerba mate safe to drink? Yerba mate has been well established as a powerhouse of health and nutrition. With antioxidants significantly higher in concentration than green tea, in addition to the significant amounts of chlorogenic acid and saponins unique to mate, yerba mate has shown to be an effective drink when consumed with the right temperature of health both socially and scientifically. Several studies have actually shown mate to destroy cancer cells. In 2011, in a study conducted by Alvira de Mejia, mate was shown to destroy colon cancer cells in vitro. Several studies have been conducted on the anti-cancer properties of mate tea, and comparisons have been made with other teas such as green tea, believed to have a high anti-cancer potential. Mate was shown to possess the highest cytotoxicity against human liver cancer cells compared to green tea, which means that mate was more effective in killing liver cancer cells than green tea was. Mate has been shown that oral cancer cells can be completely inhibited by treating them with 375 micrograms of mate extract per milliliter. In 1991, the International Agency of Research of Cancer, IARC, evaluated the carcinogenic risk of mate and concluded that there is limited evidence for carcinogenicity of mate in humans. Yerba mate has been placed on the United States 
Food and Drug Association's GROSS list as an item that is generally recognized as safe to consume. Yerba mate has been historically consumed for thousands of years by the Guarani peoples of South America and revered for its healing and naturally energizing effects. They prayed to the god of mate and called it the drink of the gods. Elvira de Mejia, the foremost mate scientist, taking into consideration the cancer studies as well as the wide array of health benefits of yerba mate, presents a concluding thought. Yerba mate has been consumed for centuries but it has only been scientifically studied in the last two decades. The growing worldwide interest in mate has made it paramount that research on this herbal tea continues, as it has shown extraordinary possibilities not only as a consumer beverage, but also in the nutraceutical industry. In regards to carcinogenesis, the most recent information suggests that the association between mate consumption and the occurrence of cancer may not be due to the raw material itself but to the contaminants that may be present in the processed mate. The high temperature at which mate tea is consumed may also play a role. Therefore, post-harvest technologies need to be improved, especially the drying process needs to be optimized to completely eliminate contaminants. Additionally, good quality control, including thorough analytical testing, becomes imperative to ensure its safety. Now here are some suggested safety measures when consuming mate. Know where and how your mate is processed. Taking into account these studies discussed, particularly with the understanding that pH levels can be controlled by limiting flame contact to leaves during post-harvest and removing the contaminants from the storage facilities, it would be wise to select the cleanest, non-smoked, organic mate available to you. Being able to ask the company owner such questions as to the quality control of the mate has never been more critical. Don't drink your mate very hot. Properly gauge the water temperature used to drink mate. Never drink boiling water. A suggested temperature of around 165 degrees Fahrenheit is recommended. Understand the building correlation between alcohol and tobacco consumption with yerba mate. If you do smoke and drink, then take extra precaution not to drink very hot mate. Mate may work best in addition to a healthy diet and lifestyle. Eating plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables, combined with sufficient exercise and relaxation, may help offset the chances of developing disease and boost mate's ability to reduce oxidative stress, proliferation of free radicals. Disclaimer. The author of this report, David Escarapur, also known as Dave Mate, is the founder of an international yerba mate community, Circle of Drink, and a provider of organic yerba mate and yerba mate products at circleofdrink.com. There was an unavoidable bias towards the consumption of mate. However, the author, before being associated with selling mate products, had lived in Argentina for over two years studying the herb. In total, the author has close to five years experience of personal daily consumption, more than one liter a day. Interviews of mate consumers, dozens of published videos discussing the health effects of mate on youtube.com slash circle of drink, and has published the first US-based yerba mate book, Mateology in 2013, which could be located at circleofdrink.com slash mateology. Thank you very much for listening to this research video on the supposed connection between yerba mate and cancer. I hope now that you're better informed on the subject. Thank you. Bye-bye.